Thank you for joining us for Prep Extra Live, our first Prep Extra Live show, Freddie, of the uh, 2015 season. Uh, <laughs> and it's an impromptu one, folks. We're still trying to figure out our new digs here in Monrovia, um, which is you know going to be kind of a work in progress until we figure out uh, our lighting situation, Freddie, uh, our room situation. Back to square one. Yeah, where exactly we're allowed to go. This is 2007 uh, here at the SGVN right now. Yeah, 2007. I'm not even sure it's 2007. But anyways, we are here. Uh, I'm Aaron Talegian, and on my left, Fred J. Robledo, and on my right, your left, uh, Steve Ramirez. Um, whoops, excuse me here. I'm trying to watch the show and also do it at the same time. Uh, anyways, the 2015 season is upon us. We have some very important things coming up. I was looking for a copy of our Prep Extra football magazine that's about to hit stands um, Wednesday. this week. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday, that would be the 26th, right? That's right. Come out okay. Wednesday, it'll be in the newsstands and in home delivery, and you can purchase them at our new digs here in Monrovia. We're at 605 Huntington Avenue. We left the Tribune after... Huntington Drive. Huntington Drive. Yeah. We left the Tribune after 40, 50 years. We're here. It's a beautiful new office space. Um, M-Town. I've always loved M-Town, Aaron. Always been my favorite place to cover high school football. And you'll, you'll probably see me a lot more there now because it's right up the street, and I'm one of those guys who like to be close and get right back home to do these shows. Right. Um, well, uh, okay, here's our first situation. We have someone knocking out the door. Uh, come on in. <laughs> okay. Tell them uh, we'll be a few minutes. One of our stringers has actually showed up to pick up his... Uh, his, his press pass. Um, so that's kind of an interesting yeah. start to the show. So, yeah, like last – and many years, uh, Freddie, we've had Larry Morgan, Keith Lair, guys from the desk stick their head in to tell us, hey, you screwed something up in your stories. Uh, I can't say this enough. This is going to be very impromptu stuff. Um, anyways, so the point of the show tonight is to kind of get everybody um, – or today is to kind of get everybody set up for the season. We have the magazine coming out on Wednesday. Friday night we're going to have, you know, our, our usual full slate of coverage. Where's Mike the Cousin going to be, Freddie? He's going to be at the – I'm not sure exactly. We were talking about Bishop Amont and whether we really need him there because it's a Fox it's Sports a game. game right? So we're looking at some of the other local games yeah. in the neighborhood. He might go to Arroyo for the Arroyo-San Marino game, kind of a trip, okay. uh, Pasadena crossover. He can yeah. come out to La Mirada for uh, – There's La a possibility Mirada. there too, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be interesting. Um, and they have a big press box. R right, exactly, they do. And, uh, you know, the problem, well, we'll get into that game in a second. We're also going to get into predictions on some of the bigger games coming up uh, in Week right Zero. Uh, Fred's going to go get Rudy Ramos, his pass right now. Um, Stevie R., one of the things I wanted to talk about before we kind of got into this, um, and it's the following. We, as a group, you know, I've covered, gosh, I want to say, you know, maybe three decades, four decades maybe combined of, of, of high school football. Yeah. For me, yeah. and I wrote about this in our football preview magazine, this is the most, I guess I'd say talented that I've personally seen the Valley. Yeah. Now, I know there are a lot of people that saw, like, you know, Los Altos glory days with, yeah. like, the Mike Smiths and Amat was also rolling at those yeah. times. But, but my scope yeah. kind of goes back to the early 2000s. And yeah. this is the most, yeah. you know, loaded that I've seen the Valley in, in my time here. I mean, yeah. when you have a uh, when you have a, a D1 recruit at Baldwin Park as a mm -hmm. lineman, yeah. you know, and Paco Perez, yeah. and then you you know you go to Ama, you have yeah. two of the top recruits mm -hmm. on the West Coast. Then you go to La Mirada, you have a kid that's going mm -hmm. to SC, a kid that's going to Utah. Um, you go to La Habra, uh, they have a you know Colosseum, the the linebacker, he's going to Arizona. Um, everywhere you look, Charter Oak has yeah. Eccles going to Cal. Glendora yeah. has USC quarterback Matt Fink. I mean, I'm not seeing it this talented. Usually we have yeah. one or two or three yeah. of these types across all our three yeah. zones. It's probably, I would say, since the early 90s, when, like I said, Amat had numerous athletes who were, who, who were, who were going D1. Uh, but I think there was always like, you know, like you talk about the ball and park kid, there was like... Uh, um, I can remember a lineman. I can't remember his name, but the lineman from from Workman who went to to USC, I think. And uh, but since 2000, uh, it's it on the on the surface it looks like the best uh, uh, prospects who 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 are deep, 
you know, are, who are good D1 prospects. You know, I think 2000, it was just like Cody and Travis Parker from Los Altos, Dominic Robinson from Diamond Bar, and uh, there were a couple of Mott guys that, uh, that year too, but not deep across the board like this seems to be. I mean, San Marino has J.P. Sophie at receiver. You know, he's good enough to play, you know, <laughs> in any one of the West Coast conferences in yeah. college football. I mean, he's probably going to set records this year. Um, you know, you have obviously talent again at St. Francis. You yeah. have talent at Monrovia. Uh, I've just not seen it this stacked in a long time. Um, and, you know, it, it speaks to what type of season we're on the verge of, of having here in the Valley. I mean, it's just extremely, yeah. extremely exciting stuff. Um, we're talking about how uh, loaded the Valley is yeah. this year. I've said this is the most loaded that I've ever seen it. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't know about you, Freddie. I mean, I'm... I'm Sure, you go back a little longer like Stevie does than I do, which is just kind of the early 2000s. But I don't remember, you know, having this many top-notch recruits. Right. The, you know, we didn't even mention Northview, which has a yeah. legit chance to win a CIF championship. Top-notch recruits plus teams that have legit CIF championship um, aspirations. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you, you're talking about Bishop a lot right now. I mean, the D1, they've got that two guys too, already going to USC. About. And there, there's there's more that, that are going D1. You look at Glendora, you know, you're talking about Fink. And you're right, Charter Oak's going to be good. Just kind of spread throughout the Valley. La Mirada's got their guys. There's just a lot of guys, not just the Tribune readership area. You're talking about Pasadena, right? Um, Whittier, the, the Whittier yeah. area. Well, it, it, has two D1 yeah, guys. it's, it's going to. Um, but but will that translate into on-field success for everyone? That's the question. You know, because yeah, that's, there, that's some of these guys are are super players at places where you don't know what their depth is. You don't know what else they have around them. Glendora's uh, one in particular. <laughs> we can get into them. You know, I, I talked to someone who's been uh, who's on their team who I run into a lot. And he says uh, their receiving core is looking uh, really good right now, better than people uh, anticipate. So that will be exciting for me to see if, if Fink has guys to throw to and he's not out there just kind of running around and um, trying to avoid injury because that's dangerous when you have a running quarterback like him. Right. Well, that was one of the questions that I had coming into this season. We know how Glendora, you know, their season ended last year, right? They're in the championship game in Week 10 for the Palomares League title, and Fink gets injured uh, by running the ball. He's a running quarterback, very mobile guy. That's you know part of what makes him the, the college prospect that he is. He gets hurt doing that. He doesn't, he, you know, he's not really able to play much the next week against. Um, I forget who they lost to in the was it Colony? They lost to in the first. They lost round? to Colony. Yeah. No, it was the second round that they lost to Colony. I think they yeah. lost in the first round. Um, I'll, I'll check you it can right look, now. I'll probably be right in that. You can fact check it. <laughs> but, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the second round. Um, well, anyways, my question is this: He's got he's got the um, he's got the, uh, the the scholarship locked up now to USC. Yeah, you're right, Freddie. It looks like they lost um, to Colony in the second round. Right. They beat Summit in the first round, right. and lost to Colony in the second round. Uh, but he was you know banged up, and a lot of people feel that if he was healthy. They maybe go all the way and win the whole thing because um, they maybe would have beaten Colony and after, after you know Colony beat Glendora, they go on and win it all. Yeah. My question is, does he tone down the running this year? Why risk you know injury again? He's got you know the scholarship locked up. I'm sure that's not going to factor in his head. Like, hey, I got to be healthy for when I get to SC. But you know that aspect of the deal is closed. Yeah, He's well, got the scholarship locked up. So why would you risk? Yeah, and, and you talk about potential of winning a championship, and I don't think you're going to win a championship if you're going to rely on Fink um, to run 60, 70, 80% of the time because you feel like you don't have receivers. He's got to have guys that help him out, that balance that out. And he has such a great arm, and he's you know he's such an experienced quarterback by now. He's got to have tons of confidence. That the but they don't have win, weapons, Fred. Well, that's what we're going to I mean, it's not out. like they have Charter Oak skill players or Ahmad skill players. Yeah, he doesn't have. Well, there, there's not a lot of teams that have in that division that have Amat type skill players. Right. Anyway, there's you well, know even if you look at the, the colonies, the Charter Oaks, um, very good. That. They good, don't have yeah, that. Good skip, but I but I think they're going to be fine. I mean, most of the time he's going to be able to, to to get something out of nothing, but he has to be able to get the ball to receivers that can that move the chains and make big plays, make it easier on them. Because I thought last year uh, their offense, the way it, the way it worked. And, you know, when he was healthy, he was still unstoppable, even though you knew when he got outside he was just going to take the ball and run. 
I think you, you've, you've, you've got to be able to balance that out a little bit more than they did last year if you're talking about winning the championship. Now, you look at that South Hills game where they lost the Pelham League title. There's no doubt in my mind if, if Fink's healthy, they win that. And they're probably a, a, a number one team, and they're probably on opposite sides of Colony. And who knows what happens if they play Colony for the championship. That screwed that bracket all up when he got injured in Week yeah. 10 against South Hills, who was celebrating afterwards like it was some big upset, when in reality it was really Fink getting hurt. I, I don't the think they were game. celebrating so they much celebrating. as they were rubbing yeah, it in yeah. our face. I told you so. I told yeah, you right. so. Like, yeah, like we knew Fink was going to get injured in the first quarter, and, and that was going to be the difference in the game. Um, that, 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 that's part of the game. South Hills deserves credit because they had a horrible start last year and came back yeah. and won that league title. You know, with or without Fink's injury, they they won the league title. So and the next you week, know, you they were you bounced right out of the playoffs by yeah. Los Altos. Um, they got a freshman quarterback this year. South, South Hills. Hills. Yeah. yeah, I've heard Coach uh, Albert Rodriguez has talked yeah. about whether to you know reach down and start using that kid now or they're going to use him. Know. Okay, really? Yeah. Him. When I, I got, I got, him, I got an inside tip. Okay, they're wow. going to use him. Well, that's that could mean you know things are so yeah. bad in that yeah. sophomore, junior, and senior class. That you know they're desperate and they got to use, or it could mean the kids the next coming. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that ought to be interesting to see what happens with South Hills. Um, we can get right into predicting this week's games. Um, the big one coming up for all of Southern California is on Friday night Oof. at the Santa Ana Bowl. Bishop Amat, uh, they're heading uh, to Orange County to take on Modern Day, and this is a game that you know, like I said, biggest game in SoCal that night on Fox Sports on on Prime Ticket. Uh, 7.30 start for all you uh, newspaper guys that are going to get ruined by that. Um, you know, a TV game runs longer yeah, right. because of commercials and, and the 7.30 start's going to hurt things. Um, I don't know what else to say, man. I mean, this is this is, this is is the big one of the night. I saw you wasted no time right on the blog going and picking Bishop Amat. Yeah. Um, and, you know, meanwhile, across, I guess, you know, good cop, bad cop stuff, on my blog, I'm talking about the worst off season that I've ever seen a high school team have. Um, you mean in terms of injuries? Yeah, and in injuries, luck, just these, you know, situations. I mean, I, I you know, I listed that on my on my blog, but we can go over them now. The most recent injury is all preseason all area offensive lineman, a UNLV commit, Matt Brayton. He has um, a, a shoulder injury that that may cause him to miss significant time. Um, probably not going to play this week, or you know, pretty easy to call him out this week. Andrew Vasquez, the All Area defensive end, um, you know, one of the better pass rushers that you'll see. You know, quick, gets around tackles, really can 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 rain down a lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks. He has a knee injury that he suffered in the semis last year against Corona Centennial. That hasn't healed properly, Freddie. Um, and he's likely gone for the whole season. Mm-hmm. Um, Trey Sidney, you know, missed a lot of practice time throughout August because of a bad hamstring that he suffered in a passing tournament, you know, right at the end of the whole passing circuit. Uh, he's been banged up. Uh, then you have the suspension or the dismissal of Toriano Sweet, the stud running back, who wasn't with the team right up until, like, late into the summer um, joining the team. You know, that's a problem. Um I don't like two-headed quarterback monsters. That's what you have in Ryder Ruiz and, and Damian Garcia. Um, you know, it, 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 it may work out, of course. Uh, you know, um, but you know, for, for you know, history kind of shows us that those things are divisive. They're problematic. Um, they, they, they're just very difficult for coaches. You know, have to sit there and say, should we go to this guy? Should we stick with that guy? You know, it's very hard. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, and, and you're always wondering if you're making the right move. Um, you know, they had the chance to bring in Brigham Harwell, um, the former Los Altos stud who has that trench hogs camp, who guys like Vasquez and Ryan Munoz, another stud defensive uh, uh, lineman player for Amat, and a young young stud coming up, Aaron Maldonado, who will also miss this week because he has a, um, he has a suspension. He still needs to serve out for one game uh, for something that happened at the end of the Allen right. game last year. Um, so, I mean, you have Vasquez out, and you would think you could stick Maldonado somewhere on the defensive line and kind of move things around. Well, Maldonado's not able to play this week either. So, just to really and, – and, and Harwell ends up going to Alamany now. Um, you know, just a really, really, you know, bad offseason. I mean, you know, you, you, luck, of course, has a lot to do with it. Who the heck knew that, you know, these guys are going to get hurt and have these problems? I've never seen anything like it. You know, the kind of offseason you yeah. want to have with this kind of loaded team coming back was, you know, these guys all got better, you know, over the course of, you know, their junior to senior years. And, and man, they look even better than they did last year. And 
you know, because of these injuries and, and you know, this suspension or, or whatever, you don't have that right now. Yeah. And there's no, you know, there's no figuring it out, you know, early on or whatever because you're playing modern day. Yeah. Well, it seems, you know, in the past, a lot of Almots, when, they, when they've had these big injuries, it seems like they've come towards the end of the season and they've really killed them. Maybe maybe having some of these early right now, and we don't know how long these guys are going to be out. The, the problem with the injuries you mentioned, shoulder, hamstrings, um, knees, knees, those yeah. those are could be lingering things, especially hamstrings. It kind of, you know, when you think about Trayvon Sidney, um, you hope that they use extreme, and I'm sure they will, extreme caution with him. If he's not ready to go this week, he's not ready to go. you got to think long-term yeah. with yeah. these guys. I mean, there, there's nothing like... You know, they're the number one team in the uh, CIF Southern section on Max Preps' uh, SoCal ranks, uh, rankings, and Max Preps is yeah. a par- partner of this this year. So we'll reference them a lot. No, they're, I don't think they're number one on they, Max Yeah, I was just looking at Max Preps. They have Amat number one. I thought that was Cal Preps. No, no, and Cal Preps. They're Max Preps and Cal Preps. CIF Southern section rankings when you, yeah. when you, when you well, put in their the national period. rankings, they had three teams in the Pac-5 ahead of Amat. So I don't, Go ahead and look at it. I just, I just posted it. Whatever, we get the point. They're very highly ranked every year. Yeah, in any case, you know, there's so much anticipation. There's so much excitement at Amat. Yeah, those, those kind of injuries kind of throw a wrinkle into, uh, into things. I mean, you don't want to start off the season with a loss. That just puts a big damper in anything. But you've got to put it in perspective. If Brayton's not ready to go, if Sydney's yeah. not ready to go, and Vasquez, as you mentioned, could be something that could be a season under. Um, it's going to get tough on Friday night, but we're going to find out what kind of depth they have. I think Toriano Sweet, even though he's missed a lot of the year, I hear he looks like a monster. Yeah. And it, it, he had a breakout uh, season last year, really towards the middle of the season where right. he really came on. And I think if he builds on that, if you if you look at the way he's built and those legs and those trunks, I saw him you know during baseball in the spring. He just looks like he's ready to go. And although he was off the team for a little while, he was always right there in their ear. They always expected him to come back on that team. So uh, you know he's going to be a big a big key in what they do. The two headed quarterback situation, Aram. I think it might work out only because. These guys have different strengths. You have Garcia, who's a great, you know, he can run the ball a little oh, bit yeah, right. better than Rhea, uh, than Ryder. Ryder's a, a little bit thrower, a little taller quarterback. Situationally, and these guys are both experienced. And, and you know, with football, there's, there's going to be injuries. So it's good having two guys. If someone goes down, you have a guy that's already experienced that can pick up. And you're comfortable with either one of those guys leading your team. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much. Um, Coach Haggerty platoons those guys because I think he will platoon them. I think he will use them. And I don't know if it's going to be <clears throat> separate series, separate halves, separate quarters, but I think he's going to mix them in and out depending on the team they're playing, the defenses they're going against. And you know that, Steve. Yeah. I mean, this team is really good at breaking down a defense and putting in what they think is the best personnel for that defense they're going against. Yeah, I mean, they're, like I said, it. it what they have with, with the two receivers, the running back, whatever quarterback is on the field, it's almost pick your poison for the defense. I don't like the fact that they have this two-headed monster. I think you got to pick one guy and say, he, he's our guy until he doesn't perform. Because, I mean, I don't think he... he well, now you're talking about how short of a leash do you have. Yeah. Well, it's, it's... I mean, a first quarter I mean, interception, do you no, wish no, Damian no, get up? No, no. I mean, this, uh, is, this is yeah. the problem with quarterback yeah. controversies. Yeah. One of these kids, yeah. if we're being honest, should have yeah. transferred out. Yeah. You know, um, and, 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 and you, know, you would have this yeah. problem. I mean, I, I, I hate I, to say it, but I mean, you know. I, I, um, suggesting I, players transfer now. Well, there's, the there's, there's, there's just, well, what happens is you get resentment. Why aren't yeah. I starting? If I was in there, you know, we'd have won. Or, you know, yeah. if, and it's not just the kid thing. It, 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 it's fans. It depends on the kid, Aaron. I mean, it's, you, it, Freddie, it but you know that the most popular guy on the team is the backup quarterback. Right, because of course we would be winning if the backup QB was in there, you know. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know that, that's what happened. I just yeah. Stevie knows yeah. historically yeah, I mean, these things yeah, do not like, work out. I, I mean, I've been a football fan all my life. I can go back and the uh, NFL uh, Channel did a thing on this on how 19, I think it was 70 or 71. The Cowboys had I was going to say, right. Craig Morgan and Roger Stubb. Robert Stubb. Stubb. And he but, wanted to alternate every play yes, with them. Yeah. Tom let's, let, let's have fun right now. Let's let's play Bishop Amont. Uh, he wanted first. to alternate every no, play. But, yeah, I mean, he, <laughs> he couldn't decide. And then three, three quarters into the season, he finally said, Staubach is our yeah. guy. And you know, he went on to win the Super we, Bowl. We haven't, we, haven't, so, uh, we haven't been in a yeah. lot of practices or seen a lot. Yeah. Based on last year, yeah. let's play Coach Steve Haggerty. If it was your pick, if you had to pick between... The two quarterback, Damian Garcia or Ryder Reese. Steve, who are you going with? 
Well, I only saw Ryder, but in the only game I covered last year, I saw Ryder. He looked he looked really good. But when you guys say that that uh, the, the other guy, Damian uh, Garcia, yeah, Damian Garcia, uh, the fact that he adds a run option as as someone who's followed the game, I would I would kind of like that. Yeah. Because it it just gives the defense something else to consider when in trying to. To stop the team. Yeah. What do you think, Aaron? Uh, I would go with Ryder just because, you know, <laughs> it's funny. I, I think Damien's the better runner. I, I think he might even be the better overall quarterback. But when you see Ryder, you know, the bottom line just kind of looks better. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he just kind of gets the job done. And, you know, you just don't mess with that. And, you know, um, it's unfortunate Damien got injured. Um, and, you know, Ryder really seized the moment, you know, when that happened late last year, and, and he won some big games for yeah, that. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, you know, not to say Damian didn't win some big games, too. I mean, you know, he helped him win the, the Sarah game, which pro- proved to be really huge. Um, it's it's a tough thing. I mean, this is not what we're, you know, we're, we're supposed to be doing, but, yeah, you yeah. know, um, the, the, it's tough for the coaches even. I feel for them. Um, and, you know, hopefully both players kind of stick through it, and, and, you know, when they get their chances, you um, you know, they make the best of it. Um, but, again, you know, it's not a great situation uh, to be in. So that's why, you know, when I, when, I, when I look at this game against Modern Day, I say to myself, you know, how does Amont win this game? I mean, my, I guess you could say that, you know, if they can fill in for Brayton, which is very hard to do, you know, you have this sort of big three situation on, on offense with, you know, Sweet running the ball, you know, presumably Ryder at quarterback and, you know, Vaughn's outside and maybe even, you know, yeah. Sydney if he's up to speed. That mm-hmm. offense is going to be very hard for anyone to stop. Yeah. Very, very hard for anyone to stop. And then on the flip side, I know Modern Day has a lot of young guys playing. Um, their quarterback situation isn't isn't maybe as good as others in the Pac-5 from what I've read. But their receiver situation, uh, especially if these St. Brown kids from um, – Servite that transferred, and we're still waiting to see if they're going to be eligible this week. If, if they are eligible, um, you know, the, to go along with Andre Collins, you know, this team is pretty loaded offensively. Um, I just, you know, I, I, I just go back and forth on this game. You know, to me, if, if Vasquez is playing and Brayton is playing, this is a no-brainer. You know, uh, you take Ama and, you know, um, you know, maybe they need, you know, a quarter or two to kind of get going. But without those two guys going, um, I don't know. I, I don't think they get the job done on, on, on this night. I, I'll take modern day. Uh, Stevie, you want to split um, the difference? Or? I, I kind of like Ahmad in this game. I, I, I see your, your point. But I, I just think uh, with the, you know, I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. And I, I think Ahmad might, you know, if, if they're up to speed, the problem with these first games Sometimes teams are not up to speed because you know they they haven't played at that speed. Mm-hmm. You know they've been in practice, but they haven't really played at that speed. But I think just the weapons that Amat has. Um, See, I don't you know, think it's high scoring. I think okay. Modern Day is okay. really good defensively okay. in the front seven. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the better Pac-5 okay. teams, and you know Modern Day was yeah. nine and three last year. They 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 lost to Centennial like Amat did in a close yeah. game. They also beat Centennial mm-hmm. earlier in the season. Um, and Amat was, you know, nine and four. Went to the semifinals again. If Amat yeah. was full strength, I think this team is really, really good, Freddie. Yeah. Especially when they hit their stride, and they will hit their stride at some point this season. I just don't know if it's going to be yeah. in week zero and, on and, the road against Modern and, Day. Uh, also, another point is is kind of how they approach the game. I mean, we kind of approach it from a different aspect of these these non league games. The coaches know this is not the BCS. That they sometimes like to experiment in these non-league games. Well, yeah. I don't think you yeah. can do that in this game, and I'm <laughs> well, glad you I brought know. that up because that last is. year the Trinity League, which Modern Day plays, and got both of the at-large berths mm-hmm. in the Pac-5 playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're Ama and you're one of the Mission League teams, you're sitting here saying this is very important to us because we want our league to get that at-large berth. Um, and so you know that CIF will be using this game right. at the end yeah. of the year as a barometer. Well, yeah. the Trinity League was better than yeah. the than mm-hmm. than than the Mission League or the Mission then League. You're right. Was this, this is a this is a very important it's a huge game. game. As far as that. Yeah, that's yeah. why the non-league games are important because when yeah. you're right when you look back at the end of the year and you're going over tiebreakers and how you did against those other bubble teams. 
Um, this is a big one. I mean, to beat Modern Day, a Trinity team, um, they don't have any other, I don't think, Trinity teams on the schedule, do they? On the non-league yeah, schedule? Yeah, Servite. Okay, that's right. That's right. Servite. So they, both of these games, yeah, very are, they're, they're extremely important. And look, I picked Bishop Amat um, this morning, knowing that, you know, Sydney has a, He's, he's nursing a hamstring. I'm, I'm going to guess he's going to be able to play. Yeah, he, he should sure be able to play. He's going to yeah. be able to go. I, yeah. I, I think what it's been, they've been extremely cautious with, with him right now, as they should. Um, and we didn't get to see him at receiver hardly at all last year. Yeah. You know, they had Ar, Ar, Ardondo, Arganado, and 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 Vons. I think these two guys, you're going to get them out to them. They're going to, you know, they're right. going to play, make, and do their thing. You're going to have, uh, like I said, Sweet in the backfield. I think their right. offensive line, although they lose Brayton, it's still a big, experienced offensive line that's coming back for Bishop Amat. I mean, take Brayton is, a, is an, an important piece, but I think Bishop Amat up front. I mean, this is that this is that offensive line. Yeah. Um, since their freshman year, they've been building towards this. I think they can get away with it uh, this week. And and you know, I'm taking Amat. In, a, in, a, in an extremely close game, but I think oh, they're going to yeah, yeah. go down there and do enough to pull it out. And I didn't get a chance to answer that quarterback uh, situation. Oh, if yeah, it was right, me, right. I probably – I think I'd go with Ryder too. Yeah. Um, just because when I saw the second half of the year, um, the, the X factor to me is what he did in, in tight situations and game situations where he had to deliver. He delivered. And part of that was being on the field healthy at the end of the year. You know, n- you know nothing against – um, Damien. Damien Garcia, because he didn't get a chance. But when I saw Ryder Reese in that game against Corona, the way he John Elwayed that team mm-hmm. down the field in the last minute to give them a chance to win in a two-point conversion to win the Pac-5 title, it was incredible. I mean, he did that with a, with a lot of confidence. That whole fourth quarter, the way he brought that team back when they went down big early, I just think those are the kind of things yeah. mentally – I really like Ryder and that kind of confidence that he has. He can throw the ball. He's not a terrible runner. I do think Damian Garcia is a special kind of – I love high school quarterbacks that are mobile and can run the ball when there's nothing there. Damian gives you that, and I think in situations they're going to use him. But if it's me, I'm guessing what I saw at the end of the year, I'm probably going with Ryder Ruiz. He's more of a prototypical college-type quarterback, a little, a little taller. He has a good arm. Um so that's what I'm probably. That's what I yeah. think they're going to do. Uh, I think, and I think they're going to bring Damian in, in in situations at quarterback. You may see Damian in different parts of the offense, even I think during the year because he's such a great athlete. But my guess is they start with a rider on Friday, and and it'll be the right thing to do. D- Damian I think looks better doing everything. Yeah. Than Ryder, but you know the bottom line with Ryder isn't that much better than what it is with Damian, yeah. but but still. He just gets the job done, and I don't know that you mess with that mojo that yeah. was started. Of course, I think. Well, the, I think, I the think com- that that last year you had to stick with Ryder, right? Because they had success, and you want to keep that momentum going. But I think now, I guess whoever has been looking good in practice and who's is, is how you, yeah. you, you you have to put that aside what happened last yeah. year, right? And look at how they're so playing. so tough because yeah. because so Damian is such I, a great. I'm glad I don't have to make that. Yeah, decision. Damian is such a great runner, and and I love quarterbacks who can get out and do their own thing. It's not just the running; he's he's mobile. He's a good passer. He's he kind of moves around. And, 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 you look, can, and when you have a Vons in yeah. Sydney, you know sometimes it's just getting the ball to those guys and letting them play make. I mean, yeah. you don't have to be you don't have to be a Matt Fink in that offense really. You just no. have to be someone right. who can you know get it out, right. get the ball in their hands, and let them do their thing. Right. Um, you know, Damian uh, is the original like quarterback of yeah. this stud senior class. When they were freshmen, he was the quarterback. Um, and, you know, he's, you can say, the original quarterback, you know, the one that everyone thought would be the QB all the way through their high school careers. But here we are. Okay, so Freddie and Stevie both have Amat. Uh, I have Modern Day. We have to move on to a, uh, a, a another big game going on um, somewhat closer to the area now. La Mirada, um, boy, they're really, <laughs> really, really going after it here. They're hosting what one publication says is the number one team in the country um, in St. John Bosco. And if you don't think they're number one in the country, they're certainly in the argument or they're in the top five in SoCal or top two yeah. or three in SoCal. Um, really ambitious here, Stevie, yeah. of, of Mike Machete to I'm, go after yeah, uh, the Braves. <laughs> I, I, I'm just wondering what – has he thought this whole schedule out because – I mean, I think they're the best team in, in, in the Whittier area. Yeah. But they could start out 0 3. I mean, just based on. You think Charter Oak's going to beat them? Well, no, I'm not saying. <laughs> or I'm modern saying day. They, no, I'm saying they, they could. You know, they got they they, they follow with Charter Oak. Then they that, have modern day. Then they have modern day. Then and they then, have they, San they, then they take a kind of a little breather, I guess. 
with San Clemente. But, uh, uh, San Clemente team that was in a CIF yeah, championship last yeah, year. Yeah, I know, but compared uh, to the other, right, the, the other, the other, right, schools there, it's kind of a, a, a you know, like I said. A, what, what was that a score last year when La Mirada, their, their season opener, they they took on someone else? Well, they played to Soro, who yeah. was who was very highly thought of and, yeah. and and pretty much dominated them the whole game and won. 26-23, but they also played Servite that was the one two weeks later and lost 56-14 to yeah, yeah. Uh, in a game that some people say was not even that close. So um, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm th- are you thinking this is going to be more of a Servite uh, La Mirada yes. kind of yeah. result? Like yes. Something as powerful as St. John Bosco? Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, Bosco graduated some pretty good players, yeah. but they're at the point of their program <laughs> where they, Rosen, just, they, maybe? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they just kind of fill in and you know, McGrew's back yeah, at running back. Yeah, he's so. a stud. I think he's going to Washington or yeah, Arizona. I mean, so. they, they have yeah. talent up and down the yeah. roster. Uh, you know, La Mirada, they graduated a really nice senior class as well. But, you know, as Machete does, they've reloaded. They yeah, have yeah. A, they have a, a transfer that plays defensive end that's going to – he's an SC commit. They have a kid in the secondary, another transfer named Micah Kroom. He's going to Utah. Uh, they'll use them on offense. They have a, a former Long Beach Poly player who's expected to be the quarterback. Yeah, he's going to be the quarterback last time I talked to Machete. So yeah, okay. He's, he's and, the number so, one guy. And, and, and you guys, this this is yeah. why you play these games if you're La Mirada. These guys who are transferring there are going there not just because Machete and his staff do a great, great job of getting these guys out to, to big-time colleges – but they want to play this schedule, this yeah. non-league schedule. They, they they want to take on these teams. Machete wants to take on these teams. I think he wants to build a program um, up to where, you know, for a public school, they can take on these giants year in and year out. And the more you do it, and they've got to start showing that they, you know, they, they, can, they can beat these teams or compete with them regularly. Mm-hmm. And I think they will be able to get there. Mm-hmm. You're just, then people are going to keep transferring over there because yeah. – uh, La Mirada is a great place to go to school. It's 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 a great area. It's a great coaching staff. They do their due diligence for their players who go on to the next level. And I think these are games they have to play. I think yeah. St. John, but St. John Bosco is like that's stepping up too much in class. I'd yeah. rather see them yeah. play some of the middle of the road teams. Well, they're they're probably, that's always going to happen. This is a toughie. Uh, the suburban league is kind of yeah. It's it's really the last at least last year took kind of a big step down right and so even though they played a, a very tough time league schedule last year they played those games where they were just blowing teams yeah. out and i think that kind of affected it their, their, well yeah because they got playoff. they got bounced in the first round yeah. of the playoffs by an at-large team in salesian yeah. that was coming out of um, the tough angeles league yeah. which you know was it's, it's a very tough league i mean if you're one of the public schools in um the southeast division you don't want to play one of the teams coming out of the Angels League, whether it's St. Francis yeah. or Harvard Westlake or Cathedral or yeah. or, um, or Salesian, and that's that's what happened to La Mirada last year. They still should have been able to beat that team. Yeah. I wonder about chemistry with La Mirada with all these new transfers coming in, you know. And the way to find chemistry isn't really to play St. John Bosco. So you know, you hope they have that <laughs> solved, you know, yeah. before that, you know, before that happens. Um, you know, Charter Oak will be a little bit more like it, and that's yeah. that's coming up, you know, the following week. Um, but I'm not picking La Mirada in this game. I'm not even picking a close game. I think St. John Bosco, you know, really yeah. takes care of business yeah. here. I, 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 think, think? I think it'll be a route, too. I think it'll, Bosco will feel like they're going, you know, downhill the whole night. They'll probably be able to just kind of run right through them and do whatever they want. Um, yeah, I got. I, I, I'm, my guess is around three touchdowns. Three touchdowns would be yeah. nice, right? Yeah. If, yeah. if La Mirada hangs yeah. within three touchdowns, I'd consider that pretty good. Yeah. I really would. I that, consider three touchdowns a blowout. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, for most games, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, yeah, I, I think, like I said, he's, uh, Coach Machete has taken on a little bit too much with, with, with this opponent. I like, you know, like Charter Oak is almost kind of equal to them. Right. Or, you know, that's kind of their, their, their neighborhood of, of, of who they can really compete against. And I, you know, what Bosco's done the last the last few years just kind of shows that I mean, this is their number one. You said they're number one by by one publication, but they've been a top five right. national team the last few yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. This and was the so, team that lost yeah. to Centennial yeah. in the yeah. uh, Pre- top yeah. five final. All these preseason uh, rankings, they're fun. We'll, yes. we'll know a lot more after the first couple of weeks where these all these teams yeah. really are kind of um, settling in. 
but yeah, I, I can't see this as a close game. Yeah. Right now, um, downshifting now to some neighborhood football, right? Where where you know this is where this is you know guys that grew up around the school presumably uh, going up against guys that grew up around their school, you know, can ride your bike to campus type thing. Um, Montebello is going to El Monte on Friday night. That'll be the game that I'm at. Um, this is a really interesting matchup that has a chance to be, I think, the best actual game of the night anywhere. Um, El Monte, you know, we thought Freddie after the Brandon Martinez year that they had, I think in 2011 or 12, um, that, okay, you know, they had their one year, you know, as a program has struggled for a long time. They hadn't won league. They hadn't yeah. won a playoff game since the late 70s. Uh, and then the B-Mart team came along, and they won. And, okay, now they'll go back to being El Monte. And they did the following year. I think they went 1-10. and ten. But last year they won six games. They finished second in the league. They beat Arroyo. Um, and now this year they think they might even be better than the B-Mart team, um, which is pretty great to say. They have Roy Barajas. They have a quarterback um, in Edward Dominguez that has an offer to, to, to Division to, to, II Dixie to, to, State. To be better than When's the last time an El Monte QB had an offer? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, Vmart didn't yeah, even. Yeah, it goes back to Omana, you know, probably yeah. in the late 70s. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, to compare them to that Vmart team, I don't know if that offense is going to be better than the Vmart team. It's pretty special. That The Vmart team you're talking about, they really they still struggled defensively. Oh, yeah. They had to win yeah. a lot of those games, right. 60 to 50 something. So yeah, if, if, if this offense re- resembles yeah. the Vmart offense or, you know, can be something similar in a way, I don't know if it'll be better. It's gonna to me. It's gonna come down to their defense. Is their defense a lot better? Last year their defense was admirable. It was, it, it was, it was, it was okay. Yeah, yeah it was pretty decent. Right. You look at a lot yeah. of their scores. So that's a key to me. If 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 they can score a lot of points, and these offenses have been able to, and they and they can and, and defensively they can hold their own, then yeah, Aram, I, then they 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 have a chance to to really do something, particularly in this league and division. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know if they're gonna have a better offense. That one was special. That one set San Gabriel Valley records. Right, um, you know, for passing offense, um, but it's different because yeah, this yeah. one has a, has a real freak running back in this Roy Barajas, who's a threat to score every time he touches the ball. And it's funny we mentioned that season in the high scoring because the playoff win that they got was a two point conversion, I think, with no time left um, to beat Montebello in the first round of the playoffs. And obviously, you know, the Montebello uh, coaching staff, you know, Coach Pete over there, you know, and yeah. Zavala, those guys, yeah. you know that they haven't forgotten about that, yeah. Stevie. Yeah, I mean, they're not are, the same yeah, players, yeah, but, you know. The, the, the coaching staffs always kind of remember that more than the, 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 the players, obviously, right. in, in a situation like that. But that's a great coaching staff to have at, right. at, at Montebello. You know, Coach Zavala is one of the better defensive coaches in our San Diego Valley yeah. News area. Right. Um, and, and, and Coach Gonzalez has, has, has done a great job there. Yeah, CIF at, champ at, at St. Paul. Yeah, and uh, but since he's moved over, over to Montebello, especially the last couple okay. of years, you know, they, they've gone to the quarterfinals the, the last two years. Right. Um, you know, well, they, I mean, they, last year, Stevie, they start off 0-5. Yeah. Uh, then they come back and they sweep the Almont League, win that, beat La Puente in the first round. Um, and then they, they give Northview a better game than what they gave them earlier that yeah. year, um, but they lose it to Northview in the yeah. second round of the playoffs. Um, and they got guys back. I mean, they got yeah. Isaac Mendebles, yeah. yeah. the, the running back. Yeah, and, he rushed for almost 2,000 yeah. yards. He's a scary game. weapon in a game yeah. like this. Yeah. Um, their quarterback, uh, I saw him in the opener against Diamond, yeah, Bar, Diamond Bar, last and year. he didn't look good, but <laughs> in, 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 in league, he he looked really good. Right, he yeah, picked he, it up. You know, he he was the co-offensive uh, player of the uh, of the year for the for the Almont League, and so he's he's kind of going to be a key guy because if if, if they just have Vanderbilt running the football, obviously teams are going right. to are going to stack the box and and say you know he's not going to beat us. You're going to have to find someone else, and that's where the quarterback has got to step up. But like Freddie says. Elmani's defense and Elmani maybe along both lines is vulnerable to getting pushed around. And if you have a stud running back like Mendebles, we know what Montebello is going to do. They're going to try and run the ball, keep Elmani's offense off the field, let Zavala come up with some kind of defense to stop Barajas and, and Dominguez. I don't know how you do both, but 
it's a pretty easy yeah. game plan for Montebello. Yeah. You know, pound the rock and keep them off the field yeah. and hopefully get out of here in a defensive struggle. That's why it's a good game. That's why you're talking yeah. about. That's why you're going to be there on Friday night. Right. And I want to find out if Almonte can stand up to that because that's if they can, yeah. if they can, that's a good sign uh, going into the Mission Valley League because right. those Almont League, Almont League teams traditionally. They are kind of physically more imposing or they're stronger, and they love to play that kind of smash-mouth football. They so, have no other way. Yeah, so yeah. It's, 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 gonna, it, it's a good opener, I think, yeah. for both schools to yeah. kind of see where they are right off the bat. And I know you've been talking about El Monte uh, a lot this offseason, Aram, so I'm buying that Aram Kool-Aid. <laughs> I'm drinking it, and I'm going with El Monte in week one. Oh, man. I, I, you know what? They have they have two weapons compared to one. That's how I'd like to say it. You know, El Monte can pass, and they can run with, with Barajas. Um, I think they're at a disadvantage when it comes to the line play and maybe the overall defense, which, which, which you know, may be enough for Montebello to win the game. Uh, but I'm going to pick El Monte because I think Barajas or Dominguez makes, you know, one – too many plays for Montebello's liking. I got Omani. What, what do you think, Stevie? Um, I got Montebello in this game in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a tight game. I just think, you know, with, with, with the running game, you know, like you said, they can... He ain't, could, drinking, he ain't drinking your Kool-Aid. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, they can control this 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 football game. And yeah. I, I have a lot of... They have some players back on defense. You know, they really improved the second half of, of last year. And... Um, Coach, like, I, you know, what I said about, about, about Coach Savala and, and what he did when he was at Northview. And, you know, I think it's I think it's going to be a better year for them. And I, and I, I, I think at the end of the year, they're, they're going to have a good shot yeah. uh, in, in the playoffs. So. In, 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 but in, in this opening game, I kind of like them. Yeah. You know. Hey, you know, hey, Steve, speaking of Northview, you know, it's your alma mater. They got some transfers in this year to go yeah. up and the back. <laughs> yeah. That team's going to be, has the yeah. ability to be pretty special. Yeah, Probably I mean, better than South Hills even well, this year. That's, that's the best be, team. Uh, that's the best team at the district I field mean, this year. It's going to be North. They have the two running backs. I they mean. they they got in two very athletic receivers, and the, they got to get them all yeah, clear. Yeah. That's true. They got to get them all clear. That's true. That's true. Uh, especially Dominic Ramirez, who yeah. you know is really one of the top. Oh yeah. We're closing up. We got the Covina District Field in Valley. Yeah. That's yeah. Friday. Yeah. If you've been there, the field's kind of turned around. Yeah. Doesn't have the intimate. Feel that it's had yeah. in years past because you have a track there, but the the stadium and the the outside of the gate it just looks spectacular. It's 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 going to be a nice home. Yeah, it's going to take a while to get yeah. used to yeah. because I you know, I am all about atmosphere and I like those fields <laughs> that are right on those stands that are on top of the I'm field. All about I'm going to miss that, yeah. but you know the field is really nice. I mean it's 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 yeah. nice that they finally did something over and the parking. You yeah. can wash your car on Friday and drive into that parking lot without having yeah. to wash it again yeah. on Saturday morning. Because yeah. <laughs> they have, they have our yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, that'll be cool. Freddie, now the game you're going to be out on Friday night is looking like Monrovia. We're in Monrovia right now yeah. at the new. I'm going to ride my bike office. over there yeah. and ride back to the office. Right. Uh, in town. In town. Now you realize, like a lot of the Monrovia fans, you know, may or may not be happy to see you. You know, because yeah, they yeah, feel like you, you, you know, the I'm Billy, back. The Billy Cats thing. Huh? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, you know, I know. They, but they were know. the Billy Cats up until they, when they finally won one. When you won lose one. Ten. They won three. Well, when you lose yeah. nine in a row and then win one, you're the Billy Cats until you win one. <laughs> that, that was my whole point. Yeah. So that ought to be exciting to get you back out to a Monrovia game. Um, and uh, in town. Yeah. I, I, you know, they're going to have a, a heck of a team this year. The big. The big question is whether they are still the top dog. Uh, I guess they technically yeah. still are in the real Honda League, or whether San Marino. A lot, Marino. Of, a lot of changes this year. If you're a Bishop Amat uh, football fan who likes to tailgate, all the road games are going to be the best games this year because you can't tailgate at home. These crazies over there at Amat just got rid of tailgating. Should I put that into the also part of the worst off season? In yeah, the tailgating. Now here you're going to have. Might be the worst. You got part the best of the season in 20 years chasing a championship. They're not going to have tailgating at probably the best place. Where they have tailgating in Southern California. I mean, Almont's road tailgating is better than a lot of their teams' home tailgating. And this year it's going to be even amped up. I mean, I don't know how they're going to deal with it. Right. Not having tailgating. It's just, that administration is just so silly over there with some of these things. Hey, Fred, if hypothetically they lose on Friday night to Modern Day, you know, because this is, this is probably, even though Cal Preps has it a 20 point game, I would actually think Almont would win in a walk if they were healthy. I mean, really, I think Almont's that good. Uh, but, but you know, they're not healthy. There's question marks. But if, hypothetically, they lose this 50-50 game, what do you think happens? I mean, do you think just kind of like, eh, I just think you know, they, lose, they, right, I just think we, they lose 
some of the buzz just because you know you don't worry about no i mean season derailing before it even gets started no i mean i think in this this is going to be all about when they get in the league and what they do with league and they've got to earn a playoff spot through league and then be healthy going into the playoffs because i think if they're healthy going into the playoffs the, the, only, the only guy uh that you're really saying is probably a season under at this point is possibly vasquez mm-hmm. um can you get a you, they, and you could probably get away with that with everything that they have coming back, although he's a pretty big piece. Yeah. But I think it's going to be more important that they're healthy towards the end of the year. They can lose a game like this, and you're, it's going to just knock some of the, the excitement, some of the luster, because so many people are talking about them outside our little fishbowl in right. San Gabriel Valley. Right. I mean, I, you know, I've, I had people in the offseason calling here, asking about certain players. You, you look at any yeah. national, local publications, they're, they're, they're right in that mix. I mean, there's some excitement there yeah. that, 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 that hasn't been there. Right. Hey, last year, you know, at the beginning of the year, Arams, uh, we're arguing whether they deserve being the Pac-5. Right. Now we're talking about a, a team that's nationally ranked that can win the Pac-5 legitimately. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of buzz right now. And That's because they went yeah, on that and, semifinals and, yeah. run and, and, and have those style Yeah, groups. and th- a lot of times this is what happens, though. You have all of this off-season mm-hmm. talk. You have all of this off-season excitement. Then you go in that first big game and you, you lay an egg. Wouldn't be surprised if it happened, well, given that the injuries that you talked about, given that it's modern day, given that it's on the road. But let's find out. Let's see if they've got something more than, than what we know. I mean, who knows how far these guys have come along. I mean, they believe they've got the team to do it, right. with or without some of these guys who, are, who have these injuries. But they definitely have to have uh, Sydney. He's got to be healthy. You know, um, if, that, if that hamstring is lingering at all, I say you don't even play him. Even yeah, if that I means mean, losing a game. Yeah, like, I mean, in a situation I like that, I mean... Hamstrings are so yeah, dangerous. Yeah, I mean, you want to make sure he's healthy by the time league season... And I say that because it's zero on. week, you know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's still summer, it's still August, mm-hmm. it's still yeah. warm nights, yeah. easy to aggravate those things. Mm-hmm. So if, if he's not 100%, then you don't play him. If you go into that game on Friday night... And he's 90%, 80%, and he comes out of that and he's re-aggravated it, then that's on Bishop Amat's coaching staff. They've got to look after him on Friday night. You don't send him out there unless you think he's 100%, 100% healthy. If he goes out there and he re-aggravates it, then that was a mistake yeah. to play him. Or you could just um, limit his play because of... of <laughs> just saying. No, but, I mean, because of the way the weather yeah. is, is, is right, right now. Yeah, and I'm we, not there. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. serious it is. Because we don't know how serious of, it is. Um, they know. There's a lot of, of minor injuries that occur in these first couple of games yeah. just because the, 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 the players haven't gotten up, it, up to the speed yeah, of but the you, game. You know hamstrings. You, re, you re-aggravate those now. Yeah. That could be something that's with you yeah. the whole year. I mean, right. it, just, it, just, it just can be. They can't afford to have him uh, nursing that kind of injury the whole year. If that means he has to miss out first week, first two weeks, to get 100% healthy, then you do it. What we don't know right now is how severe it is or where he's at. We're just I, totally speculating. I don't know about this. This, I mean, I know what you're saying. You got to err on the safety of the kid or whatever. But man, I mean, this is this is the the team that has gotten the most hype, I'd say, in the Pac-5 compared to what they usually get. This is that team this year. This is like the buzz team. Yeah. There might be teams ranked higher than them, but you know, this is compared to what they usually get. This is the Buzz team. They're debuting on prime ticket. They're debuting against, you know, arguably the most, you know, noticeable program, you know, uh, in, 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 or one of the top two or three noticeable programs in the country mm-hmm. in modern day on TV. Um, this is not the spot where Alma wants to fall on its face. This is the spot mm-hmm. where you want to justify all the hype yeah. and, and show what it was all about. But I gotta tell you, it seems like every year in the Pac-5, there's one of these types of teams that gets all this hype and they fall flat on their face. Yeah. Like I think Servite yeah. had it happen to them a couple. It's such a tough division that things can swoon yeah. quickly. And you know, if you don't get things figured out, then you got real problems. Yeah. Up. And it's, you know, and it's, I hope that I don't a, think that'll be Ahmad this year because a, they're that talented. And it's a tough division to have, uh, you know, a, a target on your chest. Right, uh, right. It's, and it's, they it's, do it's have a, that. It's a tough. Yeah, it's, it's tough when you're going against a modern day who kind of is looking at you like, oh yeah, right. this is the number one team in California. Well, you know, let we'll, right. we'll show you what the number right. one team. We're in twenty California point underdogs. Like. Oh, right. At, at right. the end of the day, is it? What happens postseason? Yeah. The more important. Yeah, so, that's well, what I'm just if, saying. If, if they lose this game because they're cautious, they're going to get everyone's best players. shot. Is what I'm saying. No, they they are, may, yeah. In the past, right. they may have been the team. 
Yeah, they were the hunter. Say, the, the hunter that would right. sneak up yeah. on teams. Right. They're going to get everyone right. the best shot. And this yeah. isn't like Charter Oak being number one in the area, taking on a team you know who they're going to beat. This yeah. is modern right. day. These are, these are right. good survival. We, we've had those teams, though, with Amat yeah. that were the hunter and, and that got yeah. that hype team coming into Amat, and, and they, they ambushed them. Yeah. And, you know, they've done that a few – I mean, they jumped all over Servite a couple yeah. years ago. They, they've done big, it to big, other teams. Big difference being that that team. Yeah, now they're the hunted. Yeah. Now Modern Day sitting there saying, are you serious? We're 20-point underdogs yeah. of these guys. Yeah. You know, where you know, it's yeah. good. You know, who yeah. knows? Uh, you know, this is the team yeah. we've been hearing about. And now Modern Day feels like the underdog. And they're at home. And, you know, this, it's just yeah. – um, it's a really, really interesting game. And, and boy, I'll tell you what, though. The flip side of all this is if Amat's able to go down there and take care of business under these circumstances, you better watch out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you really better watch out if you're aggressive. I'm fired up. We're week zero. Right. Are you, are you sure you're not switching out of the Monroe week? Well, I got to get, get back. I got to get back here for you know week one. You know we do we do have a newspaper to put out and things you know right. stories to write. <laughs> and that first trip at modern day is it, it's tough the way we do things right, now. Right. You know, but we are gonna have a very Tommy Tommy uh, Kiss. Kiss the insider is gonna be there. We're gonna have video highlights. Yeah. We're gonna have updates. We're, you're, it's gonna be on TV. We're gonna talk about it when we come back afterwards. So, you know. It's going to get written about. Good thing is the Tribune has late deadlines, so we'll get that story yeah, in the paper. Right, or a lot right, of other really. papers won't, so make sure you pick up your mean, We're, we're going to get back to the way. office Friday in time to watch the third yeah, quarter. Yeah, you're probably right. Because, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> well, it, it, I it's going to be running out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you yeah. might even be back for the fourth quarter. Yeah. Maybe yeah. overtime. That's it. Okay. It's a long show. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, like we said, Friday night, usual routines, get on the blogs. Mikey will have uh, the, the Scribble Live thing going, uh, updating scores yeah. from all over. Um, that's a great way to spend your Friday night. If you're watching even the AMA game on TV, have your laptop on you or your phone, same thing. Same thing if you're at your own game. Be following on there. We'll give you updates. We'll give you some commentary from other games. You can rub in our faces if our picks are going wrong or, or whatever it is. Then we'll have the show after um, everything kind of settles down, somewhere in the 10, 30, 11 o'clock range. Um, we'll be back with the show to kind of break down everything that happened. Maybe we'll have to wait till Amat finishes yeah. to do our show. Um, and then, you know, uh, all week, be on the blogs. There's going to be good content. And on, on Wednesday, August 26th, magazine, the preview magazine. You've seen a lot of the elements online already. Now look at them in, in a full, full magazine. Um, it's going to be something really cool to see. It's going to be a good keepsake for everyone to have. Make plans to be able to get yourself extra copies uh, because we know there's a lot of demand that day. Uh, and that will be again on Wednesday. Um, all right, so for Freddie and Stevie, I'm Aaron. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll be back with you Friday night.